Welcome everybody to tonight's home clinic. A home clinic is where we grab one quality coach and he presents on one specific subject for you guys to enjoy and he usually does that from home. If you guys have been enjoying this series and would like to see it continue, uh, we wanna ask that you would like and subscribe below. Those things certainly help us to grow and is kind of that feedback to say this is, yeah, this is a good thing, keep this coming. If you have a desire to present in the future, reach out to us on Twitter, DM us, that's at Chief at the Chief Pigskin. All right, without further ado, tonight's home clinic. Welcome everybody to another Chief Pigskin home clinic. I'm Dylan Mack, uh, head football coach at Elmwood Park High School and one of your Chief Pigskin videographers. Tonight, I am honored and ecstatic and feel super blessed to have a chance to get one of the, the living legends, not only in the Madden world, but also, uh, also in the air raid world, uh, Ron Mackey. Uh, Coach Mackey, uh, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for blowing smoke up my butt. Uh, it makes me feel really good. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me, man. I, I, I'm thrilled to be on. I've worked with Nate before, and he's one of the reasons why I got into YouTube and everything like that. So to, to come on here and talk, it's, it's, it's a real honor. So I appreciate it. No, we, we're excited to have you and uh, – and get a little bit more spread uh, spread guys on here, you know. Yeah, no, he, he's all wing T. I know. How do you do it? How do you do it? I don't know. All they want to do is run the ball, and I, I'm tired of it. But I know, man. Foot to foot in a phone booth. It's like, no, that's not fun. That's not no. fun. No, no one wants to watch that or play in it. Any money for that? Kids don't get excited about that. No. So you're here uh, to talk about some quick game concepts. Yeah. Um, my two favorite ones are uh, stick and corner. Why stick? Why corner? Um, I, what is it? 618 and 8. 618, 618H, and then 8 and 8H eight if you're talking the real air raid lingo, like, yeah. like my buddy Drew Piscopo and, and Leach and all them. I just call it stick and corner because, to me, that's, that's easier. For sure. So, uh, yeah, what do you want to know, man? Um, well – if you if there's any way you could draw it up for us, that'd be yeah. good. Uh, yeah. There you go. All right. So my favorite way to run it, first off, is out of uh two by two. All right. And the reason why is because and I know this goes out to uh Ty Grower if you're watching this. Yes, I am gonna draw this up out of uh too high, even front. But you know what? I'm not. I'm not going to do it just because of Ty. I'm going to do it at too high, but I'm going to do it as a 3-4. Uh, a because he made a point when he was on, and I was talking to him, that everybody in their brother draws up, offensively, draws up stuff against uh, an even front too high because everybody can do that. So I'm going to draw it up against a 3-4. But the caveat is I know where this, this – uh, outside linebackers coming of course. all right so for me the best player on our team wide receiver wise is the Y and the reason why I wanted the Y is because he is the he's the biggest dude that goes across the middle he's got to make catches in space he's kind of so we attack him on the outside and then once it gets spread out then we can tack him in the middle and if he's usually our best player so uh what we do is we tell them we don't we don't do yards like I would like them to run four yards, but really we tell them steps and it's four steps and it goes one, two, three, and then you're turning around on the fourth. That usually gets them to where they're going. And he is attacking the man that is head up to slightly inside of him. And we want to attack the inside shoulder. Now, please uh, excuse my crude drawings. Um, when I was in the high school, I almost failed uh, art because I couldn't, I couldn't draw. And because I didn't turn in any work, but <laughs> I'm telling everybody it's because I couldn't draw. Um, the outside receiver, mandatory outside release. Uh, we don't tell him he is not a part of the play. He thinks he's in the play, but really he's just got to blow the top off the coverage. And his number one thing is he has to release outside. We don't care if he gets knocked out of bounds as long as he's taking that corner with him. I have done the running back two ways. We have done a swing and we have done a shoot. Uh, in my previous stop, we, it used to be a swing because the running backs didn't even like the shoot. My new stop is going to be a shoot because they're brand new. They don't know anything about this. So it's my time to do what I want. I like the shoot in the quick game because it now makes that corner, if he's defending it, if it's too high, he has to declare. 
He can't sink back. If he can sink back like this when you're running the swing, then you know every defensive coach in America is like, hey, that's fine. You just keep sinking, dump the ball off, and now you have space. If you attack the flat, now you have to do something. He has to make a decision. He's either going with him or he's here, and then once you get good at it, you can tell your quarterback, hey, if you see that jump, then you got a whole shot. Um, backside, we do a one-step slant and once we get inside if there's an apex defender right here so right here if we think someone's there he's got to get inside and the moment he clears then he's getting up the field we do not want him getting past the b gap because something may happen we just don't want that uh the backside l he is running a three-step hitch and again that's one two and then turning on the third pre-snap this is what we're looking for so the f is the slant the l if this guy right here is six or more yards we're throwing this all the time i don't care what's happening pre-snap if that is gone then we're look we're reading the apex defender the guy that's head up slightly inside the y if he sits if he stays inside we go outside if he goes outside we throw it inside and the reason why i like at a two by two is because we can dictate where he's going so if they like so let's say we put the running back on this side real quick so nothing changes. Most defenses like to put the defender on the opposite side of the running back because that's kind of – they think, oh, he's running inside zone or something like that, RPO game, we got to protect the backside. So if we get that, then I know, okay, we can set it here, then we're going to push motion. So, and now he is running the swing. So that's the one time he runs the swing is when we do the push motion, which is fine because we should be banging this right here because no one's there. So that is why I like the stick. We, like, we run it at a three-by-one, um, two-back, things like that. But if I have to just run it one way and one way only, it's at a two-by-two. Two. Is that any question? I mean, you're, you're, you're an air raid master. You've, well, you've put out stuff, man. Basketball. Yeah. But no, we run the shoot route. So I totally agree. Like, I like the shoot route a lot better than the swing. Why? Why'd you change to it? Uh, we never actually ran the swing. Uh, so we just ran the shoot route right away and it just was easier for my quarterback to kind of get that ball going forward, then turn, look downfield, look downfield, then totally shift his body to the sideline, you know, where he felt sometimes where he was thrown almost behind him himself instead of thrown downfield. So I'm glad you said that because we've actually had a couple of times where we went to throw the swing like the quarterback makes the right read and everything. We throw the swing and he throws it behind him, and that's now a fumble. Right. And that we've had uh, three games where they we fumbled. The kids didn't know it. You know, the coaches, we know it. We're screaming, pick it up. They don't do anything. But the defense hears you scream, pick it up. So they pick it up and they take it to the house. And then, you know, after that last time, I was like, I swear I'm never going to do that again. It is a shoot from now. Because even if we don't complete it, it'll be an incompletion. Right. Instead of a fumble. No, that, yeah, that, that was pretty much it. Like, my quarterback was like, Coach, I don't want to throw the ball behind me. And I was like, I get it. Like, I totally don't to understand, man. That's smart. That's why you're the quarterback. I it either. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one, and what I like about this is, so I like corner next. And I only like corner in certain spots of the field, mainly inside the 20, 20 and in. And the reason is because I know that that is when um, – all right, let me take that back. Usually it's the 20 and in, but when we game plan, I want to find the thumbprint of the defensive coordinator, meaning when most defensive coordinators in America, or at least the people, I, and I'm using America as South Carolina, my, my, my region, not everywhere in America, um, they play zone until a certain point. And I want to find through game film, where is that point at? Where do they go? Zone, zone, zone. Oh, sh crap. Uh, I got the TBH, which is the tight butthole. That's what I like to call it. Um, we need to go man. And once they go man, then I like to go corner. And the reason why is we, I want to get, again, everything in our offense is dictated on where is this guy at, the why. I want to get him the ball always. Um, so now if it's man-to-man, -man, so let me just go ahead and just bend down like this. So we got man-to-man -man right here. Um, we do a four-step corner, and it's one, two, three. And on that fourth step, we're running our corner route. And the corner route is, yeah, that's awful. Don't go by my drawing, guys, because, again, I'm awful at it. Go by the steps. It's one, two, three. On that fourth one, you're planting, and then you're looking at the pylon. Um, if you're outside the 20, it's the front pylon. If you're inside the 20, it's the back pylon. But here's the key uh, coaching point. Once you plant 
and then you're going to the pylon, you've got to take another three steps looking directly at that pylon, then find the ball. The reason why I say that is because if you plant and then aim for your pylon, but then start looking at the ball, you're going to start bending it. Let me draw it up. So if you go four and then you go three at the pylon, wherever it's at, that's going to take you close. And the reason why you want to do that is because the pylons on corner is a, a, a place, an area that you and the quarterback are both on the same page. Uh, the quarterback knows where to put the ball in because you should be, if you're doing this, you should be doing uh, trash can throws to get that nice arc and everything like that. So the quarterback knows where he's putting it and the wide receiver knows where the ball is going to go. So that's where his aiming point is. If you go one, two, three, plant on the fourth and then immediately start looking for the ball, even if you're going toward the pylon, your head is going to make you turn it more flat. So you're running flat. The court, the ball is going to go over you, and you either it's going to be an incompletion when it should be a touchdown, or the defender could make the uh, interception. And nothing's worse than that. Interceptions are bad, you know, and that, that's the thing. That, this is for you, Nate, if you watch this and edit it because you're the king editor. Uh, a lot of people say they don't want to throw the ball because of interceptions, but yet I have played games against wing T teams that have fumbled the ball eight times. And I know – the wing T guys out there has fumbled the ball a thousand times, yet they don't say anything. <laughs> but when someone accidentally throws an interception, they just raise hell and say, that's the, the ban the forward pass. I don't understand that. That's me on my soapbox. I'm sorry. All right. So he's got the corner. After that, we do, we've done a couple of different things. The original corner is this guy right here would run a snag and he would foot fire like one, two, three, and just wait till the Y clears. Then he's settling up six yards deep right in the B gap. Or we don't teach him gaps. We say, okay, that's the aiming point. But the moment someone crosses your face or you cross someone's face, you put your foot in the ground, you show hands, you do the settle up and noose. You know what the settle up and noose is, Dylan. We all know it. And if you don't, you, you find it somewhere. It's on just Google settle up and noose. Right. Um, the running back, he has the shoot route. Now, what we have gone, if the people, if, if our players like the R doesn't do a good job with the foot fire, like they're still too fast, we actually just have them stand on the line and when the ball snap, go 1,001, 1,002, and then go. All right, so that's the front side. And the beautiful thing with the backside and the air raid, um, I can't believe I said backside, is uh, it stays the same. So corner and stick, the backside, meaning the pre-snap side of the play stays the same and that that's good for your quarterback so he doesn't have to learn multiple things on the back side he just knows okay this is the quick game I know I always got this on back side so the same rules apply to the back side of stick that do to the back side of corner and what we do is I actually change it up a little bit I have corner as a quick three because I want him to go through a progression I want him to go one two three so corner snag flat i know a lot of people will teach it okay where's the safeties if it's too high and that safety's head up to outside the corner then the corner is dead and all this i just find that for me teaching wise it's a you should know pre-snap you know if there's grass but i still want you to go corner snag flat because when i call this i'm really calling it because i want to hit that corner if i wanted to hit the snag a lot more then i would actually call it like snag like noel mazzoni mm -hmm. And to me, a lot of people ask me, hey, what's the difference between three-man snag and corner? To me, three-man snag is the first progression is the snag. Like, I want to go to the snag. So it's a one, two, three, and a hitch. And can I throw the snag? If it's yes, I want to hit that all the time. Then I go high, low, low, high, whatever it is Coach Mazzoni teaches. To me, the corner is, hey, I want to throw it to the Y. Like, that's my first progression. I, I want to get it to the dude and everything like that. And that's why we go with the corner. Now, sometimes we don't have a Y, like our outside guys are the best guys. Then we would run a little bit more snag. That's something we do um, in the off season. But that, those are my two favorite ones, man. I feel like I talked a mile a minute, like I was sped up or something. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, but no, I mean, that also goes with more of the air raid progression too, right? Like going from deep to near as opposed to going left to right or any of that so yeah and it's I know some people you know will go running back to snap they a lot of people when they run the corner actually treat it like it's uh like a stick where they're reading the guy that's head up to outside the the Y the apex if he stays inside I throw out if he goes outside I throw in mm -hmm. 
and that's fine. It's just, I, I, I'm greedy. I want it. This is like my, I have a, I have DNA. My DNA is two things. It's, if it's in the goal line, if it's 20 and in one of the calls I'm going to call somehow motion, uh, shifting something like that, it's going to be Y corner. Mm -hmm. And if it's third and long, I'm calling some form of Y cross. That's, that's my DNA. And you know, it doesn't matter because even wing T guys, they're like, Oh, I'm a buck sweep guy or I'm a trap guy. I'm a belly guy. It's like, okay, everyone knows it. You just have to stop it. And that goes back to the Bruce Lee. I fear not the man that practices 10,000 kicks one time, but I fear the man that practices one kick 10,000 times. We rep the piss out of this yeah, all the time. So can you get great at it? Yes, we can. We are going to get great at it. Is the defense going to be great at stopping it? No, they're not. Because, again, the beautiful thing is if they overplay the Y, then we can go F corner. Well, we run the same thing on this side. So I'll just draw that up. And what I like to do sometimes, I'm a big fan of this, is just, you know, tear motion. So the defense thing's on my one side. I'm like, ha, ha I got you. <laughs> and I'm going to the other. And then we're running F corner, and the F has the same thing. One, two, three, plan on four. You got the corner, foot fire, snag. He's got the swing, and then you got the one-step slant, and then get up the field, and then right there. And what we do is we go, okay, uh, are we going to be more corner this week or F corner? Well, whose defender is, is the worst? If they put their best defender on our Y, then we're not going to go against their best defender. We're going to go against our weakest defender, which is on the F. And usually our main two guys in this are the slots. So when you have a good year, the Y is like 1A and the F is like 1B. Or the Y is 1 and then right underneath that is the F. Because yeah. maybe the Y has a little bit more height or something like that, but the F is still really, really, really good. So that's how we do things. Gotcha. And then if you were to go trips, if I could squeeze this one out of you, if you were to go to trips, what, uh, what would it look like for you? For what? Stick, corner, both? Both if possible. Yeah, of course, man. You don't have to twist <laughs> my arm. All right. So what we do is we always put number three as our, our, as our dude. Like whoever we want to get the ball to um that year sometimes it's been y so it's gone y f then r sometimes it's gone f y and r whatever it is but for this i'm gonna first give you stick and i learned this from drew piscopo who learned it from mike leach this is the best way to run just straight up stick at stick wheel and i'm gonna run this against the one high right here and the reason why i like it is stick wheel he's got the post He's got the wheel. That's an awful wheel. Again, I'm sorry. Uh, the reason why I like that is because it takes care of these two. Mm -hmm. You know, the corner is going to go with this or this. So either way, he's going here. The linebacker's going here. Oh, who who's left? This man, the man that's head up to slightly inside the Y. What's the read for stick? It's always you're reading the guy that's head up to slightly inside. So nothing changes for the, the Y. One, two, three, turn on four and the running back who's got to shoot. So th there's no read for the quarterback. Like, he's still doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. It looks different to the defense. And, again, don't tell the F and the, y and the R that they're not in the progression. You'd be like, yeah, we'll hit you sometimes, you know, maybe. But you're doing this, and your job is to clear those two guys out. And then backside, but he's, instead of the slant, he's just got the hitch. That's it. Nothing changes. Um, if you want to go F stick out of this, which is a great play, then we would probably bump him over here. And then now the running back has the slant. Oh, God. He has the slant, so nothing changes for backside. Again, that looks just like backside mm -hmm. of the uh, play. If it was two by two, then let me get these guys back. We will just – do the outside release vert and then he's running the stick and then he's running straight to the flat so then he would be reading the quarterback well who's running that f stick then he's reading whoever's head up to slightly inside if he stays in you throw out if he goes out you throw in if there's a man there we're teaching them just like you do if you feel pressure once you feel somebody inside of you just bend it back out that way 
And coach, you can't do that. It's too much. Well, if you simplify your offense and you're just running the same things over and over again, then you can get into the nuances. You can get into the little things. It's the same thing again, like the wing tee that has 87 different versions of buck sweep. And you swear to God that you can, you can teach your kids how to do it and they can be on the line and they can call it themselves. And, you know, we don't say anything about that. We don't go, that's BS. You, 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 you don't let your kids make all those adjustments. Well, yeah, you do. So, I mean, what's the difference when we let our wide receivers make those adjustments if you're making, letting your guard tackle or your, your quick tackle or your fat tackle or whatever tackle you have when you flip-flop and all that stuff? Make the calls. Don't be a hypocrite. Well, you're okay? your, your best player here and say, yeah. my best player can do more than other people on the field. That, or, or when you – the beautiful thing about this is this offense is really simple for the uh, offensive line. So you're only really teaching your guys, your four guys. And, you, and they all play basketball because once you open it up, the basketball players come out. And it's like, okay, if you're playing basketball and you're making a cut and you're going to the basket, right, you're cutting to the basket, but there's a big dude right in front of you. You're going to keep on cutting in front of them or you're going to pop back out. And they'll all say, I'm going to pop back out. And it's like, it's the same concept. You're going to run your stick. You're going to plant. Oh, crap, a big dude's coming toward me. Well, I'm going to go away from him because I don't want him to hit me. And once they do that a couple of times, and they're like, oh, this is really easy. And the quarterback feels better because, like, even if it is man-to-man, I still have an outlet. So, yeah, I feel like, dude, you've got me on my soapbox today. All right. And then uh, corner, we'll do the same thing. I do like corner with the Y out of three-by-one better. So, backside, he still has that. He will run his one, two, three plant. Go to the that's an awful corner, but you know what it is. Uh, he's to the flat, and then he's doing his foot fire and draw and running his snag. And this is a really good play because for some reason, some some coaches will just be like, you know what, screw it. We are a too high team. I don't care what's going on, anything like that. So they kind of play this game right here. Well, that's fine. I mean, this guy's usually inside. You've got all that space. And then here, here's the beautiful thing. If they go, you know what, no, I'm going to put him on the outside of Y to take away that corner, that's fine. Then you hit him with the post, and he's running one, two, three, four. We tell him five on the post. One, two, three, four, plant on the fifth, and then run a skinny post. And then it's just post, snag, flat. And the reason why we teach that again is the first read's always the Y on corner, even if we tag it as something else. So if we run a corner, he's looking for the Y. If we tag it with a post, he's still looking for the Y. So he knows the Y is the first progression and goes with it. So that's my favorite play. Gotcha. Favorite plays. Uh, and you can build an entire passing game off of this. Yeah. I mean, our, our quick game isn't much more than this. I mean. Yeah, it's this, and then uh, we do fade out. Yeah, and we have slant out. I'm not, we've, I've tried that a couple of times, and my kids just keep running into each other. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, scrap it. <laughs> we run in the defense a lot. So uh -huh. like one kid, like just miraculously is by himself. And that's the only reason we keep it. I can't. Oh. Well, you have a reason, man. I like it. I like it. So if I could get you coach to unshare your screen. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. But no, really appreciate that. Um, no, that, I mean, air raid is uh, the beautiful part about it is that you get a ton of kids involved and you get to sling the ball around practices are fun. They're energetic. Um, that, that was one of the things that really drew me to it. And then obviously with your YouTube channel, your podcast uh, really kind of let me dive into what the air raids about without, uh, without getting into the hell mommy, Mike Leach, you, you were really my first introduction into the air raid. So I, I really, really appreciate that there, uh, Coach. Um, no, well, th thank you for watching my pasty, goofy <laughs> self talk about football, man. It, it, I didn't never set out to, like, make a very popular channel. It was like we were talking off the air. Uh, we both have kids. It was my turn to put my daughter to sleep. Uh, it was my birthday as well. So my wife gave me a GoPro for, for, the, off, for the quarterback so I can see, you know, we don't have – $800 for the VAR or anything like that. So we have to make, do a makeshift yeah. virtual reality. And I put my daughter to sleep and I couldn't sleep. So I was like, let me just strap on a, <laughs> that was weird. Let me put a, uh, a GoPro on my head. And I'm, I just had a dry erase board in my lap and I drew up one back power. And I was like, I'm gonna put it on 
YouTube just to say that bucket list. I uploaded something to YouTube and it just took off and it's that's where I've gotten now. If you would have told me six years ago that I was going to be able to talk to Kurt Warner or Jake Plummer or Noel Mazzoni, I'm going to be like, you're full of it, man. But, well, and speaking of that, you got all these guys that with the quarantine, you seem to pull guys out of the woodwork, basically, uh, last couple of weeks here. Uh, have you gone in and taken Kurt's advice and redrawn up all your uh, slot receivers so that they're not going straight? Uh, no, no, I haven't. I, you know, that's a, he's a better person than I am. Uh, right now, I would, but like I said, I'm a new offensive coordinator, and we haven't had spring ball. We haven't had anything, so I'm going just straight up bare bones. Like, I don't even know when we're going to – we'll start on the 15th. Okay. Uh, and that's just lifting with nine kids, but we can't have spotters or anything. Like, this is a cluster. I don't know what's going to happen. So, right now, it's like, okay, this is just – you just do this. Yeah. So, I've been – we've been doing Zooms, and I've just been drawing everything up, and I don't – in the season, if we have one, you know, fingers crossed, uh, we can get the little nuances of, okay, if he's this way, you know, release outside and stuff like that. But right now I just want them to uh, do their job. And really what I took away from the Kurt Warner interview was the why. What's your why? And I was like, oh, you know, I love that. I love that. So, but he's yeah. a smart man. Yes. The whole time I was like, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss. <laughs> don't look stupid. Don't look stupid. <laughs> oh, no, that was that was a real good one. And you've had uh, Coach Mazzoni on there a couple times now. That's been awesome. So, well, I have to say, I've said that, yes, that he came on to my showcast, but it wouldn't be without, like, coaches like you and everybody on Twitter that when I shoot my shot, y'all are retweeting it and helping me out. So, I mean, it's not like I did it. It was, it was a, the community that we came together and like, no, this is, this is really cool. I want to see this because uh, Coach Mackey asked the questions when we put them in chat. You know, you don't, you don't get to do that anywhere else. So I was like, hey, help me out. And y'all rose to the challenge. I was like, heck yeah, man. That, made, that, that was the best feeling, not getting those guys on, but just having coaches help me out to try to get them on. So high fives and bus laps, fellas. That was actually what I was going for. I was trying to get you to say that. So, um <laughs> On your YouTube channel, you do have a new piece you're doing, new segment you're doing, and that's the Spread Academy. If you want to just kind of plug that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so uh, let me just be straight up frank. During the, the lockdown, uh, video games have saved me. I, I've been playing Madden, and I slowly got into – a couple of my coaching buddies got me into uh, – back into Call of Duty, the war zone. And what I tend to do is I kind of obsess about one thing. And if I do, I go down the YouTube rabbit hole. So I was looking up like how to get better at Warzone because I suck at it. And I'm sick of like being a meat sponge mm -hmm. and everybody having to revive me and everything. And I found this, this channel that had a thing called the Warzone Academy. And this is like a professional guy and he's giving out advice that he gets from a lot of people. So it's making him take a step back and get better at teaching. I was like, oh my goodness, that is great because I have a lot of questions that coaches ask me. And one of the reasons why I got into YouTube was I had a horrible first year, a couple of years when I was a, uh, a coach, no one would help me. Like, you know, all coaches are all energetic. They think they have the, the latest answers and everything like that. And I would come with um, questions with some plays that I stole from smarter people than me. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, no, shut up, sit in the corner. It doesn't matter. Uh, I had the head coach actually tell me that you're lucky you're on varsity. You won't make it past a linebacker coach. I'm like, okay, that's fine. If I ever get the opportunity to help someone out, even if it's just one person, I'm going to do that. And this is my way of helping those new people coming in or people that just love football, want to know a little bit more about it. So I am taking, um, I'm going through it like I, I was just birthed into this world and know nothing about football. So we've done formations and personnel. I'm going to get into gaps, uh, fronts. I am going to take if coaches want to send me some of cut-ups of their game to get a fresh pair of odds because I know I also write. I know that's nerdy. But um, when you write, you want to give it off to someone else because you're too close to it. Mm -hmm. So you may think it looks good when in reality you're, you're just speaking gibberish. And I'm not saying a lot of coaches speak gibberish when it comes to football plays and calls and like that. But if you get a fresh pair of odds, but like, hey, uh, what were you doing here? Oh, you should have attacked. Look at all this green space on this side. Why are you attacking the 18 people that are on the right when there's only one on the left? Things like that. And it's just a way that I can try to give back to the coaching community. And I just like football. So that's a new thing that I'm, I'm doing right now. 
Awesome. No, I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. Uh, between your website, the book you put out, uh, simplifying the offense uh, last year, I believe it was. Yeah, simplifying the air raid offense. Yep. Yeah. Uh, book was awesome. Uh, Thank you. Website. And then uh, the other thing that's coming out actually tomorrow is starting is the uh, coaches summit. You, you ju- you're kicking that off tomorrow. Yeah, it's uh, the summit starting on June 12th. I'm gonna start promoting it and everything tomorrow. Um, what it is is when I when the lockdown happened, I was talking to a lot of coaches like, "Hey, what are you doing? How are you?" I was reaching out because I didn't know how to install an offense into a new team that I would not have spring ball with. And we just got to talking, and a lot of the coaches were talking about how this is going to hurt us during um, for our fundraising. And that just kept coming up. Hey, fundraising, fundraising, Mm -hmm. fundraising. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something there. And I wanted to, again, I'm so thrilled that I have other coaches that follow me, that talk to me, that reach out on social media and things like this right here uh, talking. I mean, this is this, I love doing this. And I was like, okay, what's a way I can give back with it? Even if it's small, just a way I can give back. So I called in a bunch of the coaches that I've done interviews with and clinics with. And I asked them, hey, do you mind doing an online summit with me? All you have to do is record a clinic and then just hand it to me. I'll do all the promotion, everything like that. I just want to give it out there. So coaches can do that. They can do two things. One, they can sign up. It's completely free to sign up and watch it as it's going on live. And it's going to be running from June 12th until, I, I honestly, I don't know. I have right now 14 coaches lined up. I have more coaches coming in. I'm going to do two a day, the morning and the afternoon or the morning and the evening. I just don't want, you know, a thousand mm-hmm. on one day because everybody miss it. But you can sign up and watch all of those for free as it's going on. But once that clinic's over with, you won't be able to see it again because I'm going to take it down off my channel. Or you can make a donation. And the donation uh, allows you to get the replay, allows you to get the transcript, and allows you to get the audio file if you want to listen to that on your way to work or whatever. And also, the donation is I'm putting it all in a big pot. And at the end of the last clinic that is being presented, I'm going to randomly draw a hat, as you say, a name out of the hat of a coach and either they have to be in high school or middle school because I'm not doing this for youth because there's no oversight, but I'm going to take that donation and I'm going to write a check and I'm going to give it to the athletic department of their high school. And the reason why I'm doing that plus $300 for my money, because I want to at least help one, one school try to make up their athletic budget. Cause I, I know that's like shoes right there or that's some, um, um, that's food that's with all these restrictions maybe that'll help out with the buses or water or or something i know this is going to be a burden on everybody and this time i'm saying america in america every high school program in america you should know i'm sure you're you're scratching your head like what in the world am i going to do with all these restrictions yep Uh, i just want to help so that's that's what that's the plan right there no that sounds awesome uh coach and uh if you want to go and you want to get in that, it's uh, buildyourprogramsummit.com. If you just go right there. I know that's a, that's a mouthful, but that's, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> buildyourprogramsummit.com. Yes. And uh, it will definitely be below uh, in awesome. stuff that you guys could click on. We'll make sure Nate puts it there. Um, ton of stuff there. Definitely great, knowledgeable. And book. Nate, it's not all offense. It's, it's not, you got offense, you got defense, you got a fundraising, you have uh, apps, how to use apps to get better for your kids, all of that stuff. So, so don't sandbag me because you think it's nothing but air raid spread. Okay. I'll make sure, I'll make sure he puts it in there. Um, but, uh, but again, coach, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this. Uh, like I said, I can't thank you enough uh, for doing the channel, doing the podcast. You definitely make my drive to work. A little bit better. Uh, uh, hey, thanks for having me on, man. This was this was fun. Yeah. No. And uh, and I'd like, if uh, at all possible, at some point when we get out of this uh, pandemic, to be able to get out to South Carolina and and do a an online clinic with you. Hey, uh, I would love. I don't know why I wouldn't wish South Carolina my worst enemy, but hey, come on down, man. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> So, but, but thanks again, coach, um, everybody, uh, that was another home clinic. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, hit the like button below, check out those links, hit subscribe so that you get up to date content that we're putting out. We're putting out content five days a week with our four quarters Monday and our film Fridays. 
And then also check out our online content at uh, chiefpigskin.com. Thanks for watching.